I started getting diagnosed with some fairly serious medical ailments. I just began to realize that I had been working for a retirement that I may never enjoy. We just knew we wanted the freedom to make our own choices with our time. And that's where financial independence came in. Then it turned <laughs> into how fast can we do this? Let's yeah. get it done as fast as we can. We'd started to accumulate real estate in the vein of let's have an additional source of income besides my job. We accumulated 19 units over the span of just from 2016 to 2019. I'm Debbie. And I'm Chris. We are 43 and live in Colorado and retired by the age of 40. I never wanted to be a millionaire. That was never a goal, even you know, now in my 40s, I just wanted to have enough money to be able to pay my bills. When I was 21, 22, somewhere in there, um, I remember reading The Millionaire Next Door. It was eye-opening to me because the stories they highlighted in that book were very similar to what we did. Once it became in that realm of reality that I could maybe be a millionaire, then I did become fascinated with the idea of being a millionaire in both healthy and unhealthy ways. Once Debbie left her job, we're now completely dependent on my job. Honestly, like I'm sure there was more than this, but I tell the story that basically I just stopped going to Subway. Obviously that's not the whole case, but that's all it really felt like. Once we started tracking our spending a little bit better with budgeting, I was the guy that was always trying to turn the knob down on our spending. Chris used to think it was fun to like try to spend $100 a month on groceries and just eat what came out of the pantry. So we both kind of had this thought, what if you want to leave your job someday? That thought easily turned into how can we use our money to buy us more time? I was mainly hearing a lot of stories about rental real estate. Some people were, were building mega empires with rental real estate. I wasn't looking to do that. I just wanted to have additional income. And in the, in the process of going from, we don't know anything about being landlords and real estate owners to let's buy our first property, I scoured the internet and spent a lot of time listening to podcasts, uh, watching YouTube videos, reading blogs and forums. And we got this like eight and a half by 11 vision board type of thing. So it was just something that we could write on with chalk that we had in our kitchen that would remind us of our goals. And, and as I was writing those goals down, I believe we had like, by the end of 2016, we were gonna have two properties. And by the end of 2017, we were gonna have four properties. We were getting properties that other people didn't want. There was something that was a bit of an ugly duckling about them. For me, a very difficult part of this was a lot of elbow grease. Fixing up the ugly things, working on the houses, getting smoke smells out, painting everything, tearing a bunch of flooring out. I'm spending full days over there. Chris is getting off work. He's spending nights and weekends over at these rental properties to get them ready for tenants and make them nice places to live. And as we were doing that, I'm still saving 50 to 60% of our income through my paycheck. All the extra money we weren't spending out of your paycheck was going toward buying more rental homes. All of the cash flow we were getting from rentals was going toward buying more rental homes. We accumulated 19 units over the span of just from 2016 to 2019. So it was a pretty, pretty fast and furious uh, four years. We actually ended up reaching fire at least three years earlier than we had projected.
So gross income from our rental properties can vary based on vacancy, capital expenditure, rehab, repairs, those kinds of things, but it is between eight to 10,000 per month. And our net income from our rental properties is between four to 6,000 a month. So the money we live off of comes purely from our real estate investments. We do have mortgages on all of our rental properties that we consider business debt. Our tenants pay those mortgages for us essentially and rents continue to rise as they do so as the mortgage goes down. Right now our investments look like we have about 350000 in a combination of traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs and uh, a brokerage account. $35,000 set aside in a 529 account for our girls and another $20,000 in I-bonds. The insurance that she sells for one month a year provides that extra cushion of safety or comfort as well as some other discretionary spending. Our budget now in FIRE, it looks very similar to what it was pre-FIRE in that none of our categories really went any different direction except for travel. We usually have about $10,000 in our travel budget over the course of any time and it's more than we spend. Instead of having a job where I would work 48 weeks a year and have four weeks off, I would say now um, that I work probably four weeks a year and have 48 weeks off. And we've found in our lives that meaning and purpose are important to our emotional and physical health. And part of that is around work. We are really enjoying having this freedom of time to make connections, to travel and explore. Our daughters are getting older, uh, whether we like it or not. Uh, they'll be graduating and I'm, I'm excited to be um, a part of, of their lives as they move forward into their next chapters and have the abundance of time to be able to be in their lives as much as uh, they will allow us or as much as, as feels comfortable. I think when we were searching for financial independence, what we wanted was freedom and independence from having to go to a place and do a thing someone else told us to do. And we still want that and we value that. But I think what we found through it is a much deeper, fuller, richer life.